Hey, I'm TJ Schwanke, and welcome to Outdoor Quest TV. On today's episode, we are headed to one of our favorite places in South Africa, the Eastern Cape, and we're hunting with the Lapa Safaris. Now, this isn't your typical African hunt where you drive around in a truck. This is big mountainous country. There's hills, there's deep valleys, and you walk your butt off, and all the animals are free range. So selecting the right rifle scope for your rifle on a hunt like this is really critical. Now, we're not long range shooters on purpose by any means, but there are times when you're gonna have to take longer than average shots when you hunt this type of terrain. So for us, this V4 scope from Zeiss is absolutely perfect for this type of terrain. We're shooting this four to 16 by 44 scope, but the great thing about it is it's got a couple ways to compensate for longer range shots. Anytime you're shooting long range, you don't want to have to hold over. You always want to be able to hold your crosshairs exactly where you want to hit. So there's two ways to achieve that. The first is this actually has a ballistic reticle inside of it. So it's got multiple hash marks on it. And each one of those hash marks represents a different range. And a lot of people like the reticle system and it is super efficient. The only thing you have to do is remember what yardage each one of those hash marks represents. This also has an MOA turret on it. So each click represents a quarter MOA. So again, with those longer shots, you just consult a chart and see how many clicks you have to make it to move your elevation up or down to match the range. We like to make it really simple. So we've got these custom burned turrets from Ballistics and they are made for this rifle. So this is a 7-08 and we're shooting 139 grain GMX out of it. So we've got our turret burned for that. And all we have to do with this is if we're shooting 200 yards, we set it at 200. If we want to shoot 500 yards, we just turn it to 500. It's really that simple, but more importantly, it's really that accurate. The other great thing about these Zeiss V4s is they have a zero stop on them. And what that is, so say I've cranked my turret up for a longer range shot and I want to take it back to my 200 yard zero, I can't crank it any further than that. And it's just simple matter of popping your turret off the top and adjusting the stop inside. It's really, really simple to do. If you don't think there's some great free range hunting available in South Africa, you need to watch this episode. Well, glad you can stay with us in Outdoor Quest TV. I'm TJ Schwanke, and today we're on the Eastern Cape of South Africa and we're hunting bushbuck. But a bit of a twist here. We're doing a 100% free range hunt down here. And you know, there's lots of people talk free range, but this is true free range. We've got access to hundreds of thousands of hectares down here, um, just all sheep and cattle ranches, just like you'd hunt back home in Canada. These are all native animals. They've been here, you know, for millennia kind of thing. So pretty unique hunt It's something I don't think a lot of people realize still exists in South Africa. You know, this isn't wild Africa by any means. It's very civilized Africa. This has been farm and ranch country for, for hundreds of years and it hasn't changed, but bushbuck are probably one of the most elusive of the animals here. And it's had a cold morning here. We had actually frost this morning. So probably when the sun comes up a little bit, uh, the bushbuck will start coming out of the trees to feed. So right now we're just kind of doing some glassing and hopefully we see one and can do a stock. Thing about free range hunting it's not drive around and see animals you really work for them here so it's nothing to put two or three days into to a single animal but let's see what we can see are your legs cold no i refuse to wear pants in africa i don't care how cold it is <laughs> a little bit of chicken skin on them this morning but uh It'll warm up. The great thing about here, it always warms up fast. Although today's only supposed to get to 13 or 14, but still warm enough for shorts. So we're, um, it's kind of, the sun's starting to come up a little bit. So we're just gonna kind of go for a walk around here. Ray's got a, a favorite spot down there that he says he usually sees some bush buck at. So maybe we'll get lucky and see one. What do you think, Ray? I'm hoping for the very best. <laughs> Cause like we said, they're very secretive of these little guys and uh, when one pops out to feed, you need to get onto him as quickly as possible because he can, just as quick, quick as you see him, as quick as he can disappear yeah, again. I love this little ravine over here. Yeah. And then they come out of that bush line over there and they come out to feed. They're just, they're just looking for sun early in the morning. Yeah. It's really chilly this morning, it so okay. let's go and see. Pandemic grips the world. 
People are being told to stay home. International borders remain closed. 2020 was our toughest season ever. Thankfully, we live in one of the best places in the world to be a hunter. South Africa opens to hunters. For us, the hunt is about the journey. Even if that journey is right in our backyard. Join us for season 22 of Outdoor Quest TV. Outdoor Quest TV is brought to you by Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Sacco Antica Firearms, demand perfection. Zeiss, we make it visible. Loa Boots, simply more. Silver Willow Taxidermy, see the difference. Closed captioning provided by Deluxe Wall Tents, made in Canada for Canadian conditions. So our um, tracker Bogani uh, spotted a bush buck over here. Said it was a pretty good looking ram. So it's uh, it's just kind of wandered back in the trees. But our hope is he comes back out and we can make a play on him. They're um, really secretive. They rarely ever actually come out in the open. What they like to do is just kind of work those fringes, catch a little bit of the sun, but to actually catch one right out in the open is pretty rare. So. They'll be up for a while yet though. They're not gonna, they typically won't bed down until 11 o'clock or so. Okay, so. If you, if you go down right in front of us, yep. there's a big clump of trees. Yep. That, okay, just other side, there's like a, 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 a yellow tree shining in the sun. Yep. He came out just to the left of that tree. Oh, okay, so close then. Yeah. yeah, so he's. He's in there somewhere and he was feeding, so, it, it, I mean, it could be an hour and then we'll see him again kind of thing. But yep. just, you know, you have to just cross really hard in that spot if you just see a movement then just shot. Okay. okay. So bushbuck are actually quite a small antelope, so the spiral horns are the smallest and so they can really hide easily. Even, you know, in this long grass here, they can sure disappear. So one thing um, about hunting here, especially a lot of places in Africa, you can get away with, you know, eight power binoculars, eight by thirties, things like that. But here um, I'm using my 10 by 42 Victory RFs. And I really like the 10 powers here. We're looking for a tiny animal and some heavy, heavy cover there. And having a little bigger objective, um, you know, allows me to glass later in the evening. A lot of these animals are just morning and evening. We're not hunting out in the big, you know, plains or the savannas here in Africa. We're hunting in some thick cover, looking for small, small animals. So it, I like the extra magnification. It's a little more weight to bring, but uh, I also like to have the range finder on here. I don't know, I find judging distances so challenging here. So most of your PHs will have a range finder with them, but I just like to have my own. And I don't know, the 10 power binoculars are definitely the way to go for hunting down here. So figure we'll leave him be for a bit then, Ray? Yeah, I think so. You know, he's in that thick stuff. I mean, he's obviously in there somewhere. He's yeah. grazing or he's, you know, he's, I don't think he's lying down there. No. Unless he comes out in the open, we're not going to see him. We're not going to see him in there, no. So let's just leave him for... Okay. Leave him be. We know he's here and he knows the shooter. Mm -hmm. Um. We'll come back here a little later and maybe eat our lunch here sitting on this bank. Okay. And just, and, and maybe, uh, you know, a bit later you'll come out and feed again. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> There's luck. Dead in the hand, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if we're not seeing him now, you know, we, 
we'll let everything go and maybe never see them again. Yeah. I'd rather just move around a bit and see what, if we can see something else. Yeah, sounds good. And if we can't, we'll come back here. We know that, that animal's not going to move out of this area. Right. Yeah, he's resident here that we'll, we'll hopefully pick him up again. Okay, sounds good. Can you see him, Vanessa? I'm on him. He just turned his head. So we were just walking back to the truck, and uh, Vanessa spotted that bush buck. How do we get him? Let's just walk straight towards him and see what happens to you. Okay. So we're just going to try walking straight at him. We got no shot from here. We're about 260 yards, so see what happens. Outdoor Quest TV is brought to you by Defense Aerosols, Bear Spray, for when your life depends on it. Safari Club International Canada, first for hunters. Alberta Outdoorsman Magazine. Midland Radios, communication for every adventure. What do you think? 239, I feel like it's... 242. 239, 242. Yeah. Do you have a guide? What's that? Tempted for you to have a guide? Yeah. But you see a branch of the tree, the side of him. Yeah. And I'm sure he's all, the same one. I can't see the tips of his horns, but he's definitely mature, right? Eh? I'm sure that's him. You just see his head and neck, but... I know, look, if he's actually quartering away from us. So if you take from his nose, yeah. you go down, you'll get his shoulders, and you'll have to shoot a little bit into the grass. Yeah. You feel really steady. Okay, good. Okay, well, when you're ready, if you could go short, take it. You on him? I know, and if you don't want to shoot, don't shoot. Well, it feels good, but... He's right underneath that big branch, I right? Branch, yeah. I would, you see where his nose is? Yeah. I'd go left of the nose yeah. and down. You ready? Yeah. Ready for this? Yeah. I think I might hit him a little far back. Well, it's, uh, I think I hit him. I think I might have been a little far back. I couldn't, I couldn't really see body, so I was kind of trying to guess where it was, but I think maybe he was turned a little different than I thought. So I hit exactly where I hit him, but... Exactly 200 yards. Yeah. Let's leave him a little bit, shall we? Yeah. Let's just let him chill a bit. He'll just go into the thick stuff, he won't go too far. Because um, it's heavy bush, he, there's no reason for him to run, there's no openings, there's no nothing. He'll run a little bit and he'll go and stand, and we'll leave him. I think you've gone a little bit back. Of, I think I did too. Point. I could hear the shot. I think he was more quartered than I thought. Like, I thought he was a little more like this. Okay. And I aimed for what I thought was shoulder, but I think it hit. Okay. But then it's gone right through the system, TJ. Yeah. You know, I mean... If that, if you're standing like this and you hit him a bit back, he's gonna ride him. Yeah. You know. So let's just, you definitely hit him. There's no doubt about that. So let's just wait. Let's wait a little bit. Give it half an hour. That's what my thoughts are. Okay. And then walk up on him. Okay. Um, and this is where the dogs might have to come in play. Yeah, for sure. At least we have them. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? What's that down there, Diker? Just over the cows. So 
Ja, wir haben dich weg. I think that's the only shot we had. Yeah, for sure. So, there was no other shot. These little buggers are the most dangerous planes game that I know. They're, no I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, they're very quick, and they will they will charge you if if um, if you get too close and they're wounded. Okay. So we don't want to take any chances. Yeah. Um, I've had a friend that was stabbed between his legs in a charge, and had to end up in hospital, cut his head off, and, and uh, <laughs> ended up in hospital and pulled it out because he was bleeding out. So wow. yeah, so it's not something we want to take a risk on. Okay. It's also very dangerous for the dogs. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's so. quicker than a dog because they're in the thick bush. Dog doesn't have a place to move and he can move quicker in the bush than a dog can. So we'll go look so the first. Last, yeah, the last resort is the dog. Okay. Um, we'll go down there, take a look. Yeah. Um, and just be very careful. Okay. Um, and if it happens, it'll be alive. And Shoot it quick. And if you find it, then we'll only put the dog onto it. The dog will find it, yeah. yeah. okay. But if we see it, shoot it quickly? Yeah, yeah. as quickly as you can. Yeah. Okay. Put your scope right down. Yeah. And as soon as you see it, okay. you know, if it's still alive. Yeah. Hopefully it's dead. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was a tough shot, so we'll just see what happens. Uh, the shot wasn't that bad. It's just, I just, it was hard to judge the way his body was. And I mean, I felt the rock solid and I hit exactly where I was aiming. But as soon as he moved, I just, his body was different than yeah, I. It was more of an angle than you thought. Yeah. But like I said, I think that thing gone right through your system. Hopefully. So if it, if, even if it went a little bit back, he's going to go right through. Mm -hmm. So there should be some serious damage. Yeah. This segment is brought to you by Stony Creek Hunting Gear. It's in the blood. Well, we're gonna head in. We've got the dogs on a leash, so we don't want the dogs to get hurt by the bush buck, but um, that way, if he has traveled a ways, we can just follow the track with them. Don't think they walk on a leash often. <laughs> oh, does it? Okay. There's another post right there. Just gonna cross the cattle fence here. Well, all my fears were for Nod. He went maybe 20 or 30 yards, so I guess I hit him better than I thought, but uh, pretty happy to find him dead in here. Let's go take a look. Beautiful. Yes, it went at a hell of an angle. Eh? It did, yeah. A lot more quartering than I thought. Beautiful, well done, TJ. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Good spotting, my guy. <laughs> well done, partner. Ah, thank you. That was awesome. Is the spiral on slam done in four, <laughs> four days and in one hour? And Ten o'clock in the morning. This is the first yeah. thing we've killed before dark, like yeah. just before dark. <laughs> Vanessa's fault, most of the time. <laughs> oh, beautiful. That was an amazing hunt, though. It. Uh, they sure are secretive. A secretive little bugger too. But uh, we'll get him out in the open here, give you a little better look at him, and uh, okay, Diva. We can all take a collective breath. Yeah. Well, Ray, we got that one done in record time compared to everything else we've been hunting. We've had a lot of late nights back yeah. to the lodge, but uh, you said you know once that sun came out a bit, that the bush bucket came out. It was a really cold, kind of a damp night. It was morning. Yeah, or sorry. Yeah, and then this morning it got nice and warm, and yeah. they came. He came out and. 
But, you know, this is one, you said these animals are just loved by the farmers and ranchers around they are, here. They, they are iconic animal. I mean, when hunting season comes, they live for that. They, they hunt them with dogs. Um, it's all legal. Yeah. And uh, it's been a sport that I mean, you know, since we, since we were settled. Now you said on these open free range areas, there's actually a season for them. There is, 1st of June till the 31st of July. So they're, so, they're quite protected yeah, then. they're protected and very really loved by the local people and people don't like to share their bush back with anyone. <laughs> so you're pretty lucky to have some of these cattle ranches to hunt on. Correct. Yeah, so you know what? I, I think we hear a lot of talk about free range hunting these days and free range doesn't always mean free range. And what you've got here, it's, uh, it so reminds me of hunting at home. It's exactly what we do too. You go get permission from a landowner that runs cattle and sheep and he allows you to hunt. Yeah, and you gather your areas and you look for good areas and um, take your hunters into those places. Yeah. Try and get the best you can. Yeah, I know it's a truly amazing experience to do this free range like this. And um, brought the seven odd eight in this, the carbon light Sacco. And for me, this is just a perfect rifle for, especially in this, you're, you're in heavy cover a lot, you're walking a lot, so it's nice and lightweight, it's short, you know, and anything from the all down kind of thing, it's, uh, you know, an ideal caliber as well, so. Fantastic caliber. Yeah, really happy with that, but I think our cameraman may have Bushbuck on her list too, so, yeah. <laughs> so we'll get this wrapped up and we'll see what Vanessa can find. For more information, on free range hunting on the Eastern Cape of South Africa with Lalapa Safaris. Check them out online at lalapasafaris.co.za. Outdoor Quest TV is also brought to you by these fine sponsors.